Hey gang, once again, welcome to Hollywood Hills. So after last week's great interview, and it's so cool to speak to one of the rock hoppers, Ryan Sequeira, breaking our duck as well. So that was our first ever rock hopper, and we were lucky enough to be able to go previously, I think it was three weeks ago, to the final round of the EWXEs, so that we could start talking to these different riders. And it's cool to catch up on one of the kids that used to race the GXCCs until he decided to go into the rocks. So now we're back in studio, but let's talk about what happened two weeks ago, because there has been a lot of stuff going on and a lot of stuff still to come. But let's talk about the big banger. It was the double header down in KZN to wrap up the South African National Off-Road Championship Racing Series. Now with two races already happening, one at the very beginning of the year, pre-lockdown out in Lesotho, and then post-lockdown at Rhino Park, with a lot of riders going one for two or two for one, there was a lot of tiebreakers coming into this round. So with racing on a Friday and a Saturday, it was an absolute nail biter. On the OR1 big banger, so let's start with those guys. It was tied on points for the lead of the OR1s between Kenny, who won at Rhino Park, and Charon, who won at the opening round. And of course, off the back of opening at the winning at the opening round, Charon actually signed the deal to ride for the factory KTM squad. So that was how big a deal that was. So going into KZN, absolute nail biter. Charon qualified higher, in fact, well within the top five. And Kenny was inside the top 10, but I think it was about eighth or ninth place for Kenny. So he was in a bit of a problem as far as the queue went, and obviously the dust was gonna cause him problems. Charon walked away with the win on day number one in the Big Bangers, and unfortunately on the final lap of the race, whilst pushing and whilst playing in the dust, Kenny went down hard. Unfortunately, he was a no-show for day number two. Charon still had to get the job done on day number two, though, because now JC Nienalba was moving up into second place as he moved ahead and away from Delport. Kenny, no show, unfortunately no championship for him, but the big story was Charon Moore gets wins on both days of the doubleheader. That's three round wins out of four events, and he is your newly crowned off-road champion in the OR1 Big Banger. So from us here at Hollywood Hills, couldn't be happier to see it. You know, we love Kenny, we love Charon, we love all the guys that race out there, but to see a new champion is something very, very special. So our hats are off. We tip the cap, as they say, to Charon Moore for taking his first ever national title. Then in the OR2, similar situation. So the opening round was all about Brett Swanepoel. The second round was absolutely dominated by Jazz, that's Jared Kutsia, and then going into the last round down at KZN. The betting man would have always put money on Brett. He's always performed well down there in KZN, and it was no different here. Not just that, but he was smashing overall wins on both of the days as well, and that worth going down on very, very, very hard terrain. Huge roasty on his elbow at the end of day number one. It was a question mark whether he would line up for day number two, but he did. He got the win, he got the overall, he actually got the overall title as well that was on points held by Jared Kutsia coming into KZN, but that now overall title, so the big number one goes to a small bike, as they say, a 350 in the OR2 class, and the OR2 title goes back to Brett Swanepoel. He won it, I think, two or three years ago as well, so that's cool. Then in the OR3s, he, I wouldn't say he's been untouchable, but he has been the man to beat on the season. That's Bradley Cox. So Brad Cox is the number one plate. He carries the championship forward from 2019, but he's been pushed extremely hard. Some would say harder than he's ever been pushed, and I don't know if this battle is gonna continue or whether Cox is gonna get promoted up to the 350 class or stick with the 250s for next year, but we'll watch the press for that, as they say. Cox did enough though to win on the days and stay ahead of his championship rival and rival on every single track that he arrives out and that's Dav Cocker. Cocker pushed him to the absolute limit once again, but the small bikes do perform well down in KZN and this time it was Cox. So Cox goes two for two, back to back championships. So there's another one grabbed and in the bag and for the trophy room. In the high schools, it's been all about Manny Wilson. Dylan Cox did show some good form at the beginning of the year, showed good form at the end of the year as well. But I think the momentum is just in the hands of Wilson at the moment, and he nails down his big number one plate. Remember two seasons ago, he was pretty much unstoppable, untouchable. He nailed down the 85 junior national title, GXCC title, regional title. He won pretty much everything that year. Last year, learning on the 125, this year, an unstoppable force on the 125, and we do know that he is not gonna defend his title next year. He goes up, da, 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 2021 into the OR3s. So good luck, Matty, and good luck everyone else that's on the gate with him. 
Then in the age group categories, let's start with Pharma. So Pharma opened his accounts with the win in Lesotho on the smoker. Then in the off season, the forced off season lockdown as we like to call it, he moved across into the big 450. So it was a big change for Wayne and then coming into Rhino Park, we weren't sure if he was gonna gel perfectly with it. It didn't look like it was a perfect fit straight out the gate because Peter Hall hammered him. Wayne did look like he was nursing an old back injury, but he still managed to get that second place. So going down to KZN, Wayne had to get it done once again. Hall didn't make the trip down there, so Farmer pretty much could walk away with twos and threes the whole way through the weekend and still nail down yet another title. He didn't hang around though. He took two wins on the bounce. That's three wins on the season for Wayne and another big number one plate in the Masters. And then the seniors, and I've been kind of building up to this the whole way through the season. I've still got some money on this guy to go for what's called the golden season. And that is undefeated in any race that he has entered in 2020. And that is the senior Wade Blau. So Wade Blau riding out of the Roost KTM squad has not been beaten so far this year in 2020 on the GXCC and regional gates. He has not been beaten in the nationals. He went four for four to have a perfect clean slate. And with just two GXCCs remaining, he has still a chance to go for the golden season. So we're hoping to see if he does it. If he does it, he will be the only rider to go clean gate the whole way through 2020. But with that notwithstanding, he still is the number one plate and the senior title holder and champion in 2020. So that's a huge situation. In the interprovincials as well, a couple of GXCC kids came good. Brandon Clark got the 65s and little baby Besta got the 85s. So they've got some number one plates. Looks like Besta may be jumping up into the 125s next year. And I think Clarky most definitely is jumping up into 85s next year. He's way too big for that 65 and he has aged out. So he's jumping up onto bigger wheels and a little bit more. So that's going to be fun to watch. So that's what went down and it was an absolute killer season. Condensed. It was always only ever going to be four rounds. But to doubleheader it, like we saw last year with the GXCC club doubleheading at uh, Bronco Sprite, it's a very, very tough end to the season. Then what's coming up? Well, it's a bit of a crazy, crazy, crazy next five week program. Because this coming week, we've got the penultimate round of GXCCs. Remember, it's going to be on the 31st out at Reismeerbult. Love saying that because I can almost get my R's rolling now. I've been in the country 15 years and I still can't roll my R's properly. But the Reismeerbult. Is going to be hard pack, rocky, technical, no big straights. I'm just on the phone with Vian. He says no big straights this time around. It's going to be a lot of grassland, a little bit of copywriting, but it is hard pack out there. We're racing in pretty much old diamond mine uh, areas. So very hard pack. It's going to rip tires to pieces and it is going to be challenging. He says for the guys that took a beating out at the Rodium, zero sand. I'll repeat that. Zero sand. So if you guys aren't sand fans, come ride the hard pack. I know a lot of the Gauteng and local riders are hard pack heroes, so it's going to be fun to see the guys out there. We're hoping to get good numbers once again. But remember, this is the penultimate round with no drop points on the championship. So you've got to race if you want to get those points on the plate. And then we look forward to the final round that's going to be on the 28th. And that is the final racing Saturday weekend at the end of November. That situation opened up, by the way, because... They pretty much needed five rounds of an eight round championship, or is it six rounds of eight round championship? I forget. Anyway, they needed those numbers to be able to actually call it a championship on the clubs and the regionals. So that's why it was out there. And then the second racing week of, or the second racing weekend of November, on the 14th of November, it's Farm Jam. So they're coming back into the fray as well. They're running a new timing system as well. They are working with the race control guys, which means it is a fully online entry system, very, very similar to the way that you guys enter the GXCCs. So make sure we go up there and support those guys. And like I've been saying in my online press as well, it is in the sweet spot. So we race GXCC, then two weeks later you race Farm Jam, stay loose. If you're testing some new kit on your bike, test the kit, stay fresh, stay healthy, stay solid. Then two weeks later again, we race GXCCs. And then two weeks later, we race the roof. So I'm in talks with Charon at the moment to see if we can nail down a roof, get up there, make some noise, and bring Hollywood Hill Productions to the mountains of Lesotho. But that is what is going down. So make sure you get those entries in for the GXCCs. Make sure you are ready and good to go for Rodium. Make sure you are good to go for Middleburg and the Dirt Tracks facility is primed and ready. And we are as well. We cannot wait for what is coming around the corner. What a month of November to look forward to.